Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 21. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 blue 1 casting cost cards, regardless of format or cost. Blue has always been my favorite color, and it has some of the most incredible cards, even at this low casting cost of 1. When I started this video, I thought I was going to run into trouble coming up with 10, and I came up with many more than 10. Let's move on first to the criteria. Number one, I'm looking at cards with raw power. These are just incredible cards that can swing games and take you from completely behind to incredibly ahead. Number two, they also need to have a good design. They need to feel like a blue card and preferably even be part of some type of a set or cycle so that they really feel like they fit in with magic. Number three, they need to be skill intensive. Blue is about making decisions and making tough decisions. So the more skills needed to use one of these cards, the higher it is on the list. Let's jump straight into the honorable mentions. A few years ago, something like Force Spike, a counter spell that counters something if, unless an opponent pays one more mana, would have easily made it, but the counter spells have gotten better since then. A Null is on here as one of the best sideboard cards. It's not very skill intensive, but it's pretty powerful at a one casting cost. Magical Hack is on here just for kind of the creativity that was there early on with magic cards. And it's not that good of a card, although I did try to play it in Standard several times back before it was called Standard. Uh, Personal Tutor is on here because it does a good job of fetching sorceries and is a nice addition in EDH decks, although there's definitely better versions. The one card that I really feel sad didn't make this list was Thought Scour, so it's really the best of the honorable mentions here. This is a very skill-intensive card. Often it can be played on you or on your opponent. If your opponent uses something like Ponder, putting cards on the top of their deck, it's often best for you to mill their cards instead of yours. And I like this type of heavy decision matrix as part of a really high quality blue card. Let's move on to number 10 here. This is Spell Snare, one of the most powerful counter spells out there. For one blue, you're able to stop a two casting cost spell. This really gets you ahead. It allows you, even as the second player, to counter something that someone is putting out on turn two. This is one of the cards that gives blue a lot of power in the control decks. It sees a lot of play in modern. In Legacy, you tend to see Spell Pierce a little bit more as the casting cost vary a little more and spells are a little more powerful although in in the modern environment there are a lot of creatures that are well worth countering that spell pierce just doesn't hit but smell spell snare hits really hard other areas outside of power the design on this it doesn't really into a set or feel amazing to me it's it's just a blue counter spell and the skill is often pretty light on this card your opponent's playing a two caster so you counter it because it's best in the tempo or the flow of the game in the number nine spot, we've got a card that's a little odd for a blue card because it's a tutor effect. This feels like it should fit a little more in black, but the power is just incredible. Putting an instant or sorcery on top of your library at end of turn is very powerful. There are so many good instants and sorceries in blue that this fits in really well, and you can go get instants and sorceries from other colors. The skill on this is often a little bit light as you have a clear first choice of what you want to go get, but this is a great card in EDH and should be strongly considered in most blue decks where it's legal. The number 8 spot here, this is probably one of the weaker cards out, out there. I've got this because it really fits into blue and having that arch enemy of red. It's an amazing counterspell for one casting cost, and it still sees a little bit of sideboard play at the higher end of the spectrum when you need to deal with either quick goblin type decks or you're using it to counter the red elemental blast that's on the other side. This isn't that skill intensive of a card as your choices of targets are often pretty obvious. Number seven spot here, this is one of the most powerful cards on this list. This is the card that for one mana often lets you look at the most cards. You can look at three cards and then choose to reshuffle, giving you the option to look at a fourth card. In standard, this card is really a neighbor enabled Delver of Secrets, and also given some extra power to Miracles. 
this feels strongly like a blue card, being able to look through several different cards and often make difficult choices. There's a pretty good amount of skill in when you play this card and the selection of the other, what order to put things back in, whether or not to reshuffle. This is a great card overall. I recommend it both in EDH and in pretty much any environment in which it's legal. Until Misstep is a very powerful counterspell. Uh, I would even say too powerful. It was banned pretty quickly in Legacy because it just gives your control deck too much power to lock down the game early at little to no cost, just two life. I mean, it does fit into the Phyrexian feel very well. I had very high hopes for playing this card in Legacy and actually played it in Goblins myself for a little while. The skill on this is often a little bit light as you're just attempting to move the game into a later phase, so you're countering whatever the early threat is, and then using a Snapcaster Mage to bring it back to counter something again. I'd also argue that this card is still very playable in Vintage, as there are a lot of one casting cost good spells to counter, like several on this list. Number five spot here, I've got the only creature for blue. <laughs> this is really an odd blue creature, and when I talk about Delver of Secrets, I'm not talking about Delver of Secrets, I'm really talking about Insectile Aberration. It's really just a blue flying lightning bolt, which is way too powerful. This card has two major problems to it. For one, who thought it would be a good idea to give blue a 3-2 flyer for one that triggers off of instants and sorceries, and this is clearly overpowered. Number two is the flip card design. A lot of people at the pre-releases that I go to do not sleeve their cards. Having to use that additional external card just to put this into your deck is not well put together. I hope that they do not continue this type of design. I mean, I've definitely played this card a lot in Legacy at this point. Will continue to. I don't care for the design. Oh, it's a little bit light on the on the skill. Often just put it out turn one, flip it turn two, and then win. It, it takes some of the skill out of playing Magic. It made it this high because it is just so powerful. Four here is Ancestral Recall. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, why is Ancestral Recall only number four? This is clearly the most powerful card on the list. It's incredibly powerful. It's draw three cards at instant speed. I never see it used on an opponent to draw cards. And every time they've tried to recreate this card in a weaker version, the weaker version actually ends up being extremely powerful, such as Ancestral Visions. The reason this card has made it so low is that the skill factor is often not that high. The card, you play it and you win, because of the extra card advantage being so far ahead of your opponent. It does have a nice little design flavor to it. I loved the cycle of for ones out of the original set, all of which are great except for Healing Solve, would have put it higher on here if there was any skill to it. Number three spot here, I've got Gitaxian Probe, which may not even really be a blue card as it fits into many non-blue based combo decks. It does have some skill related to it, and it feels very Phyrexian. Playing this early on to check to see what is in your opponent's hand, writing down what's in your opponent's hand, and then deciding if you're going to play another one later is a bit important, but what it does is it lets you plan out the rest of the game and have to think a few steps ahead as part of the calculus, playing them later, whether you play them for life or for mana, is often dependent on the situation, the board state, what's possible to be used against you. There are several choices involved in this card, and this card will continue to see a lot of play over time as a way to help enable combos or to go through other cards. I really like seeing this card recently in Death Shadow decks, where your life total down early is important in order to enable a death shadow. The number two spot here, I have a counter spell, but it's, it actually isn't a traditional counter spell. It counters a target activated or triggered ability. This card is amazingly powerful. Very, very good. It has a good blue feel in that it stops something from happening. And it's often very difficult to play. Sometimes early on you want to counter a fetch lands ability so that someone is behind a turn. Other times you may want to counter an activated ability off of a jitte or a comes into play effect. It also can be used as a surprise factor against an activation of Gristlebrand effect. 
draw a bunch of cards. The there are often many opportunities in a game to use this card, many of which are often bad, and finding the right one can be difficult. I strongly recommend playing with this card, or maybe even its more uh, higher mana, mana cost version of it, Trickbine in EDH, because it is much more powerful than it originally appears, thus making it to the number two spot on this list. Number one spot here, I've got Brainstorm, which is just incredibly powerful. It draws three cards, so it has that same ability of Ancestral Recall, but then puts two back on top of your library. In many cases, this putting two back can be more important than the draw three. It gives you a lot of choices, and it gives you a lot of options. And this card made it to number one is the mad skills needed in order to play it. Early on, I remember using this card in order to prevent discard from wiping your hand, being able to put cards back on top of your deck when Him to Turok and Mind Twist were prevalent in the environment was extremely useful as a control player. This meant that you didn't just play the instant right away, you waited until a reaction or maybe even the end of your opponent's turn so that you would have the most options available. As more cards have been printed, it has also gotten more powerful. Brainstorm now often enables Delver of Secrets to become the mad powerhouse that it is, but more importantly, when combined with a fetch land, it becomes an ancestral recall. Now, you're wondering here, what do you mean that it becomes an ancestral recall? The ability to put back cards that are dead cards in your hand basically make the draw one a draw three. And let me give you an example here. I was recently playing some legacy games against the dreaded show and tell. I didn't realize that it was show and tell that I was playing against until we were into the game and I had already kept a hand that was I was set up to beat a creature deck. Get down to a board space where I've got uh, Nimble Mongoose, Tarmogoyf, Lightning Bolt in hand, and a Misty Rainforest, and on the board I've got an Insectile Aberration, a Wasteland, and a Volcanic Island. Things are looking pretty grim for me, because I don't have a way to deal with the upcoming show and tell that is likely to hit me next turn. And then I am saved by an amazing top deck. I top deck a Brainstorm, which changes everything happens here is that the brainstorm is cast. I get to draw three cards, being Force of Will, Daze, and Spell Pierce. Yes, that was an incredible top deck once again, but I also get to put back the Tarmogoyf and the Nimble Mongoose, meaning that I've netted three useful cards, just an incredible swing from a single card. The last area in which this spell is so useful is with the numerical cards. Uh, Blue White Miracles is doing extremely well in Legacy because of the ability to take what would be a bad draw and put that back on top of your deck. I only look forward to this card getting better over time and hope that it stays in the Legacy environment because it adds a lot of skill and a lot of different abilities to that. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with the Top 10 One Casting Costs of Blue cards of all time. Thanks.